<laughs> Today uh, yeah. you were um, talking about data and creativity mm -hmm. and it would be great if you could explain how the data that you're collecting, mm -hmm. um, how that is actually people helping mm -hmm. um, and what the value is for them. Yeah, sure. So, so in this one project that we're working on, we are trying to gather data from thousands of people about their creative process. You know, how and why do they create and what, what, what drives them, what's their process. And, um, and the idea is if you can, you understand that with one person, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Yeah. Ten people is kind of interesting. You learn about the habits of a few creative people. Yeah. But if you can put it together with thousands of people, you can start to see pattern that you couldn't see otherwise. And that's mm -hmm. sort of our, you know, what fascinates me is how do you when, you, when you connect the dots and put all the pieces together, how do you see the yeah. big picture you couldn't see? So in this case, the idea is if, if we can see that, we can learn more about general patterns in the creative process, different creative styles that are emerging from the data, then you could come in, you could, we could learn a little bit about you, and then you could realize, oh, I'm you know, kind of fit better with a certain kind of creative style, and I could learn from other people like me, or I could learn from people who are complementary to me, who are, who are similar in some respects, but differ in some important ways that I might want to learn from them or maybe collaborate with mm -hmm. them. So that's the idea. So the idea is to help people learn about themselves by seeing themselves in context and seeing the big picture view. Okay. And um, what, what drives you? What's your passion? Why are you yeah. doing it? Yeah, I mean, in general, the work that we do in, in addition to this project on, on creativity um, is uh, we do a lot of work in mapping complex systems. Um, I'm a network scientist by training, an ecologist, but also a network scientist. And I'm fascinated by understanding complex relationships. And the reason why I'm passionate about it is I think that many, many of the really important problems that we have in our society comes from the fact that we've lost the ability as a society to okay. think holistically about yeah. problems, to realize that an action over here has a consequence over there, and to think about the relationships between things. Um, and so I'm really, really deeply passionate about helping, the, helping people more intuitively think about complex things and not be afraid of it, but rather dive in and understand that if you understand all those relationships, there's, there's simplicity that can emerge that can help you make smarter decisions and ask smarter questions. Yeah. So I think, I think myopia yeah. of decisions is killing us as a society and, the, and yeah. to have a big picture to understand where decisions fit into other decisions, um, how solving one problem could solve others. Mm -hmm. So one problem we have is that one problem causes many. Yes. You know, con conflict here causes conflict there or you know, climate change causes other problems, etc. But because it's a connected system, if one problem can, ca can cause many, one solution can cause many too. So. Yeah. If we can have that big picture, I think that's the key to us solving, you know, the important problems that really matter and that could solve many more. Mm -hmm. And um, you're doing, or your, your background has an different, has been, okay. um, you have been involved in different kinds of uh, projects and areas and mm -hmm. uh, expertises. How do all these different ones, for example, food, um, mm -hmm. Um, ecology um, data. How how do they interact with each other, and how how do they help each other? Yeah, that's a, it's a good question. I, I've been I consider myself um, a specialist in not specializing, yeah. right? And part of that, I have an ecology background. I started in marine ecology, studying you know the ocean. Then I moved to mountain systems, studying um, alpine ecosystems in in California. Um, I also am um, part owner of a cafe in Oakland where, uh, and I've been doing work on data science studying complex systems. So how are they related, right? Uh, they're all related through, through the idea of systems. And in, in nature, I've been studying the patterns of how things are connected. What is the architecture of nature? How are things connected? And the same thing if you're trying to run a cafe, you're trying to create an ecosystem for people to get together and be more than the sum of the pieces that people can benefit from the idea of, of, of a place to convene and how do you create that environment for people. And when you're working on 
Um, now we're in the world of data. Um, it's really all about understanding complex systems and how they relate and how can we have, you know, make smart decisions in the world given the fact that everything is so interdependent. Yeah. So a few years ago when in the United States and globally when the housing market crashed and it spread to, a, you know, the, all sectors of the global economy, that happened, that economic crash happened not because the banks were too big to fail but because they were too connected to fail. Mm -hmm. And we live in, an, it's true, in an increasingly interconnected society. So, the ecosystem understanding to me just applies to many different things, whether it's ecosystems of people, ecosystems of problems, or ecosystems of species. Mm -hmm. yeah. And um, what would you like to give back to the world? So, that's a good question. Um, as I described a little earlier, I'm, I'm really passionate about just giving back to people uh, the ability to think about complicated things, you know, and the ability to to see the big picture and to not be stuck in in very narrow narrow decision making kinds of views. So, so my my real passion around that to give back is just around um, making it easier for people to understand complex things. Yeah, and um, here at uh, Tech Open Air. Um, it's also in in this interdisciplinary event, what, um, what is it that you're taking with you and what do you think is uh, great about this approach um, to bring all these different um, aspects to, um, to each other and to, to interact? Yeah, I, I've been really impressed with um, the organization of this event, which um, by bl that blends art and technology and makers all together. I think. Um, we live in this society where we have suggestion engines that tell you if you like this, you might also like that. If you know, you know, you should meet so and so because they're a lot like you. And there's all sorts of meetup events to bring people who are the same together. And I think that that's not a very good approach. That the, the smart thing is to bring people together who are similar in their values but differ in what they do and how they do it. And then you start to get synergy and complementarity of people meeting one another. Um, that's how we ended up starting our company. Was I was in a program uh, at TED, the TED Fellows Program, and I met an artist. I'm a data scientist and ecologist. I met an artist and a designer and a technologist and architect from MIT Media Lab, and we had nothing in common except you know shared values and and some passions. And so we got together to be more than we could be on our own. And that's what I think is really brilliant about the way that this is organized. Mm -hmm. um, how, um, how do you think technology will look in 10, 30, or 50 years, and how will mm -hmm. humans fit in there? How will that look like? Yeah, I, I have two minds about it. One is, um, a little pessimistic, but I, but I feel a little bit relieved sometimes when I think that right now humans consume about almost half of all the sun's energy that hits the earth that turns into life we consume and almost 40% of all the terrestrial land area we consume. So independent technology, we, you know, have, have massive impacts that we have to think about and that we may live in a world that you know, there's no other good. There's yeah. no other species left. So that that concerns me. And sometimes I think, well, if we all crashed and the humans just went extinct, the rest of life on Earth would breathe a big sigh of relief, right? Yeah. And so that's kind of comforting me to know that the world will just go on and yeah. nature will kind of take over. On the other hand, I'm I'm also kind of optimistic about the idea if we can funnel our creative energy and technology to really use it for social good um, uh, instead of just funneling that creative energy to help people click on an ad which yeah. want to create you know <laughs> and consume things that they don't yeah. need if we can really funnel yeah. um, that creative talent and make it insanely interesting and even profitable for people to solve real problems then I'm really hopeful yeah. right well thank you very much yeah, for <laughs> for your kind words it was great to meet you. Yeah, thanks. Great to meet you too.